Changes Network presents A Voice of Truth and Inspiration, broadcasting on frequencies of love, laughter, and understanding, illuminating new paths to a more fulfilled way of being as we, as one, strive for higher planes of existence and a higher understanding of ourselves and the world in which we live. Always remembering, life changes. This is radio like you've never felt before. This is Life Changes with Filippo, with tonight's special guest, Elder Shaman Eros Christos. And now your host, our MC, the Master of Change, Filippo Voltaggio. Thank you. You know, it's interesting. I was with a friend uh, at a party recently, and we were having so good a time together that people looked at her and I and asked if we were together. And she said, no. We're just friends. And I thought about that. We're just friends. What more could we be? She's actually married. So we can't be more than just friends. But we're not just friends. We have been through some very, very difficult times together. I have helped her through some very, very difficult times. When she has problems, she calls me, sometimes not her husband. But yet we're just friends. You know, it's interesting, just before last week's show, I got a call from just a friend who asked me if I had a minute. And this friend is a close friend and knew that I had a show to do. And I said, you got something going on. Of course I have a minute. And I said, "Um, but only a minute. And he said, my mom almost just died. And I said, okay. And he said she committed suicide and they're pumping her at the hospital and blah, blah, blah. And I said, does your wife know? And he said, I I just told her, but I didn't have time to go through all the details like I'm telling you. And here I was getting ready to do the show. And here he was, he has a beautiful relationship with his wife. It's, It's not about that. It's just that for some reason he said, I kept thinking I had to tell you. And I said, well, I'm glad that you called, um, but I'm just a friend. No. (laughs) So I I thought about that, and I thought, okay, so sometimes I walk with my arm around my mother. And my mom looks great. um, But, uh, you know, and so people ask us sometimes, you know, they know there's, I'm probably your son or something. But on occasion, people joke and say, are you two dating? And should I just say she's just my mother? I mean, what does just mean? So I got to thinking that maybe the relationship I have with my mother is the most I could have with my mother. And it means everything to me. And the relationship that I have with my friends is the most I could have with them. We're not just friends. We are friends. And that's very important to me. So I just thought I would share that with you, that this friend who said I was just a friend is no longer one. But, um, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) So the the next time somebody asks you if you're together with the person that you're with, technically you are, maybe, in a very special way, and that they are your friends. And by saying just friends just might not be the right thing to say at that moment. So, um, anyway, I, I, I love my friends, I love my mother, and I, I, and I love being here with all of you getting to share this information. So, with that, uh, we're going to come right back after this and get to talk to somebody who is a friend to all of us, Eros Christos. Clean water is not enough. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, and most bottled waters are devoid of naturally occurring minerals. They are acidic, unstructured, and hard to absorb, and rob minerals from the body. Ironways ionizers produce a superabundant supply of powerful antioxidants in each glass. Ionized water has a reduced molecular cluster size and a negative charge, hydrating you up to six times better. Water from Ironways ionizer will help you restore your body to its natural pH balance, boosting your vitality. And ionized water more effectively flushes acidic toxins from within your body. Drink the healthiest water available today. Ionways Water Systems, their water changes everything. To learn more about Ionways Water Systems and how you can own one today, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. 
You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with your host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can visit us online via Twitter and Facebook at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Well, thank you for that. I just thought of something. Since now we have a live studio audience, they're not only listening, some of them are watching. That is a good point. And we're taping it, so they're going to be seeing it on YouTube or who knows where else. So anyway, um, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I got to hear Eros on a radio show uh, a couple years ago. And I said a couple years ago, that's somebody I'd like to interview. And that was, I don't even think I saw a picture of him. I might have, but I, it was just the radio interview. And then um, I was, that was a couple of years ago. And, and on New Year's Day, I was at a friend of mine's party, just a friend. Yes. I was at a <laughs> friend of mine's party and I saw Edos and I wanted to go up and introduce himself, my, myself. So I went up to him and I said, hi. And he said, hi, Filippo. I've been wanting to meet you. And I said, me too. And we hugged and... We've been just friends ever since. <laughs> um, so Eros is an elder. He's a shaman. He's an intuitive soul coach. He's a multidimensional channel. He's a visionary author. He's a master of sound frequencies. He's a dolphin ambassador. And his life work and service is to assist people to their path, on their path to rediscovering their true nature as divine multidimensional beings. The divine messages and sounds that come through him activate junk DNA. I kind of like to know what junk DNA is using ancient sonic codes. Please welcome to the show, Eros Christos. It's all the European connection. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The friendship. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Pretty amazing. So I'm glad we connected on this plane. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Absolutely, you know, you're such a great man. Uh, likewise, and you know, I, um, I, I couldn't find anything that could match anything that you would wear today, so I didn't even try. <laughs> you, you shine in so many ways. Good idea. <laughs> I even saw these jeans on the internet, and I looked at them, and I thought, hmm, can I? You're lucky I didn't get them yet, otherwise I would have worn them tonight. Yeah, well, you know, you should have a pair. I mean, these are fun. And it's actually, people stop me anywhere on the street and ask about the jeans, right? And it gives a way of starting in conversation. And it always leads to something different, right? And it's a great attention getter. And you can just happen to get these jeans on your website. Well, just like that. <laughs> oh, okay, well, so, so kind of like people stopping you on the street to talk about your jeans, uh, we sent this invitation out to all of everybody on our list, uh, thousands of people, and the only comments we got back, even though you're an elder and you're an author and you're all these things, the question was, dolphin ambassador? Really? What's that? <laughs> now, there were the people that were interested. There were the people that thought it was crazy. And um, what does that mean? Well, you know, you know that are human ambassadors, right? For countries. Yes. Yes. Right. So why wouldn't I be an ambassador for dolphins and for, for animal kingdom, for example? I, I suppose there is. I would expect them to look like a dolphin or an animal. <laughs> Well, the whole point is that the dolphins really are um, very powerful beings and very conscious beings. And when you interact with them in the open ocean, like I've been doing now for over 15 years, and sometimes we have literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dolphins all around us, uh, you have a very tangible experience of their consciousness and that love that exists within each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And because I embrace this energy or this love for the dolphins, they asked me, basically, I said, do you want to be one of the ambassadors on the planet? And I thought, yeah, of course, because I got to swim with you all the time, right? No, 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 no. It was exactly the opposite. Because they wanted me to go and swim with them and really absorb their teachings and their energies and then go on land and meet humans and create the human dolphin pod, one heart and one mind. Mm. So that's what the, the being an ambassador is all about. So all the work that I do, people always experience some sort of dolphin frequency. And uh, sometimes when I've done my healing work, 
in Columbus, Ohio, of all places, a woman said, Eros, you shape-shifted into a dolphin while you were doing this work. Okay. So I said, that's what I said. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, all right. So as people have been actually calling and asking questions, what's an al- a dolphin ambassador? Now, I-, I didn't know. We didn't get a chance to really chat about that. But I, I said, you know, what do we know? I, I mean, we're starting to take for granted things like, oh, my dog is smelling the other dog that I was seeing, you know, two hours ago or something, or, or my cat sensed that I was with another cat. You know, we take that for granted. It's like, how, I, you know, I don't smell dogs on people, but evidently dogs get something that I don't get. Right. So maybe, obviously, you're getting something from dolphins that we don't get. Well, I don't think it's so much getting. I think it's just opening up our way of understanding. For example, in, I have a friend in Hawaii who's a kahuna. A kahuna is an elder a shaman, of course. And he's a ninth-generation kahuna. And, you know, so he's carrying all of that wisdom and all of that experience for ninth generations. And he shared when he said, you know, if you take a, the tear of a dog and put it in your eyes, you will see what the dog is seeing. Mm. So sometimes when a dark dog or a cat is, is reacting to something we don't see, they see this subtle uh, universe, if you like. They see beyond the physical. So, for example, a dog could very well see a ghost, and you and I cannot perceive it, right. but the dog perceives it. You know? So in so many ways, nature is so much more in tune with the subtle existence all around us. And as humans, we have always made it an art to forget all of this because we are focused so much on the physical and things we can touch and something we can relate to within our five senses. So anything beyond that, we don't even... even you know. We think is weird. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's so amazing. Once you start really asking yourself these questions, you're realizing, as you said, Filippo, why do I take this for granted? Mm. You know, you shouldn't take anything for granted. <clears throat> well, take, for example, a guy that comes from Sweden and, and is now <laughs> living in Hawaii a lot of the times and talking to dolphins. I mean, what, how, does, how, do, how do you get from Sweden down to Hawaii and do this? Um, my starship crash landed in <laughs> Sweden. <laughs> and since that moment, I have full Earth duty. And I thought we were going to have trouble with the dolphin ambassador story. Your starship crash landed in Sweden. Okay. Now, I know you're kidding, but on some level, you're not from here, are you? Uh, none of us are. But I, as a child, I was very aware of um, why I was on the planet. So everything was backwards here. And through the years, uh, money showed up as really as an... an, an, an a model for how absolutely wrong everything was conducted on this planet. Okay, so everything is backwards here. That sounds like an important story behind that. What do you mean? Well, for example, everything belongs to everybody in a sense that we're all part of one another. Okay. So if there's beautiful land by the ocean... It's not reserved just because you have a bunch of money in a bank account and you can go buy that land and build your house. That's not in accordance with the law of the universe. Okay. And you cannot own a piece of air like you're saying, oh, we're flying over, over this uh, country's uh, airspace. Mm-hmm. You simply cannot own any of this. That's why I'm saying it backwards in the law of the universe Everything belongs to everybody at any given moment. And just the mere fact that you are in a human body, you are granted all the resources, all the gifts, everything that you possibly can hold. But here it's been turned in a sense that I have to do something over here in order to receive it over here, right? Mm -hmm. So already there it's backward. I don't have to do anything because it already is part of what I can have existing in a human body and experience this life. And you knew this as a child? Kind of. Okay. 
<laughs> I wasn't as articulate. I couldn't speak as well, maybe. And I'm still learning how to speak, by the way. I make up my own words moment by moment. Well, maybe we need words made up because there are a lot of things that are, can't be described in our normal yeah. parlance. Yeah. Um, okay, so this concept sounds very American Indian mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. It, does it have roots in other cultures as well? I, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, Maybe the dolphins? It comes from the dolphins as well? Any indigenous tribe you would study will tell you basically the same thing, you know, that um, <clears throat> we are all part of one another and we are what I call divine multidimensional beings mm-hmm. and we have to be the steward of planet Earth, of Mother Gaia. We don't own Mother Gaia. It's not a like an ownership that I can just take out as much oil I want or as minerals or, or anything that we've been abusing the planet, right? We're here to steward the planet. And when we do that, Philippa, we then really understand that Mother Gaia or planet Earth has such tremendous resources for us, not just physically, but spiritually as well. So when I live in harmony with her and the entire environment, Mm -hmm. I have friends in, in, in the stars. I have friends in the flowers and the trees and nature. And, and it's like a co-creation together, not a separation and trying to overwhelm nature with our technology and things like that. You know, and that's the devastation you're seeing now, the separation from, from Mother Earth. So this is a wonderful philosophy, and the indigenous cultures have this. It, it's not something that's unfortunately indigenous to our culture. So our culture, you're saying, is completely backwards to this philosophy. Right. So we're raised in this culture. How do we find the bridge between what you're saying and what, what we've been raised to believe? Well, I mean, I, so, you know, if you, for example, go out and, and it's a windy day, right? Okay. Do you ask yourself, well... The wind is blowing from the east, right? But you cannot see the wind. Right. You see the result or the reaction of the wind, but you don't see the wind itself, right? right? So when you start looking at everything around you and start asking you these questions, it opens up a channel for you starting realizing maybe what I've been focused upon really is not taking me anywhere except around and around in, in circles. Mm. If I start focusing on these subtle things that are happening all the time, something shifts. And with the dolphins, of course, it happens in a very spontaneous and a very joyous way because they teach through their way of being. They don't do anything specific. Mm. They're just being who they are. And people are then experience that joy, that beauty, that really true love that exists within each and every one of us. And I said, it's very, very tangible. And once I tap into this, it never leaves you ever again. Mm-hmm. So even though I look at you, it's fun, you know, two European here, we are sitting on stage and, and asking questions. I also see the oneness. Mm. The one who looks through these eyes is the same one who's looking back at me. Mm. And if you had a drop of my tear, you could see exactly what I'm seeing. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so so here you are in Sweden, and you, as a child, started to understand these concepts that, that, uh-huh. that you probably brought with you somehow from right. wherever you supposedly came from. Uh-huh. Now, how did you migrate into more of who you are today? Well, because um, one of the most important things to do anything spiritual, anything really worthwhile, I have to be very grounded. It's like a tree standing in in the soil. Because she stands there and firmly rooted in the ground, he can also grow very tall, you know, and branches Mm -hmm. out, right? And you also have to be flexible because otherwise you would break, right? So I went through tremendous challenges and and this quest of to know more of who I am. I got to experience what was death was at a very young age because people were dying all around me. And all of these things taught me, again, that the true path in this life is inside of you. 
-hmm. but you have to walk the path on the outside and understanding these different challenges and understanding how this operates in order to go deeper inside. So it was kind of an interesting phenomenon to experience all the physical challenges and all the different things on the physical plane in order to understand the inside path, you know, and, and, and um, but I did that for many, many years and still doing it to some degree. Mm -hmm. And so was it that one day you were just swimming in the ocean trying to connect <laughs> with dolphins and one of them said, Psst, over here. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite like that. It was in 1990. I'm making it Hollywood eyes. I, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> and he talked. <laughs> well, the Golden Globe was just. Uh, did you hear Ricky Chavez? The right. <laughs> and um, anyway, I was sitting uh, in a, on a beach in Northern California in 1994, and it was one of these uh, times in my life where I was on a crossroad. I'd just come back from living in an ashram for several months, and I really didn't know where my step, next step would be, right? Mm -hmm. And being a writer, I always used to carry a piece of paper and a pen if some idea happened, right? So suddenly, I was sitting there looking out of the ocean, and this image is on this saying, and I started writing very quickly, right? And after I said, the dolphins. I said, the dolphins? I mean, I knew about Flipper. Ah, okay. And, and he talks. Yeah, and I liked Flipper, but that was about the extent of it, right? Dolphins. It was a very beautiful message. Then every day, almost for the next 10 months, I received telepathic messages from the dolphins. Mm -hmm. Now, I have learned through the years to trust in what I receive because I can tell by the way it's written if it's a flow and it comes from a place of, of, of fluidity and it's still something that I'm making up in my mind, you know, to sound interesting. Uh -huh. And the messages became more and more profound in the sense that I started talking about why they are on the planet and, and they're, 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 um, why they are in, 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 um, in their, these bodies as dolphins on planet Earth and a lot of these different things and they taught me a lot of these different um, things about the universe and the galaxy and, and, and um, but I still hadn't seen them physically in, 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 in the water, right? Oh, so you actually received messages before you... Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then after um, 10 months, I went to Hawaii. And this is a... We, have, we don't have time to tell this whole story. I basically, I went to Hawaii with, with, and, and, and we were out in the ocean. And we were going to find dolphins. But, and there was no dolphins. And, and, and um, then later on, I was back in California. And I was in Marine Work Africa, USA. And I said to the dolphins, okay, I'm up here because you need to explain something here for me. I have received all of these beautiful messages for so long. I even went to Hawaii, and I didn't see you. You've got to give me a sign here, because if any of this has any validity. And they were over on the other side of the pool. I had hardly finished this little prayer of mine. Mm -hmm. One of them basically did like this, Filippo. <laughs> Darted through the pool, jumped up where I was standing, so I could pat it on his head on the melon, and then, of course, it dove down, and the message came that when one of us interacts with you, it means all of our species. Mm. And then they explained to me <laughs> that in order for us to ask you to be an ambassador, you, we had to see how you understand our energy. So then they explained to me that just by thinking about us or if you feel uh, feel love when you think about us or if you paint something with us or you, you're drawn to our energy or the way we look, that's our way of communicating with you. So you don't necessarily have to be with us physically in the ocean in order for us to communicate with you. And then, mm -hmm. then I learned that people have communicated with dolphins living in the desert or living in, in the most uh, weird places. You know? I, I had not heard of it. But then again, if people are communicating with ghosts and people from other dimension, mm -hmm. they're obviously in this dimension with us. They're, right. not, they're not there. So you're actually closer to the dolphins than people are to ghosts, technically. So I, I get that. Yeah. Um, and you're saying that their message is where there is true love Say shapes and forms disappear and left is only our smile. That was one of the first messages I received from the dolphins. Where there is true love, shapes and forms disappear. And what is left, left is only our smile. Only our smile. So the essence of our beauty, of our love that comes out through a smile. Yeah, the smile of your heart. 
And why are they trying to tell us this? Because the dolphins and, and also the whales, to a certain degree, they are here to help people raise their consciousness and to heal the memory of Atlantis. Okay, why does it seem to me that it would have been easier for them to come down as people? Or Very good question. The whole, in this galaxy, if you study and research, there are very few water planets. And uh, because Earth is a water planet, and we have to heal that memory of Atlantis in order for us to ascend into the fifth dimension, okay. raise our consciousness, okay. it was a very um, practical thing to take on the form as dolphins and be in the ocean. First of all, it's an, an, an environment that is much more protective and it's easier to do the work that they are doing in the ocean than being on land. Secondly, they bring people back into to the ocean and to get familiarize themselves with this uh, memory in the human DNA of the um, submersion of Atlantis in, in, in for, over 15,000 years ago, right? Now, when you say the work that they're doing, you don't mean like, things that we see them doing. It's Yes, energetically and, and, and spiritually. The Dogon tribe in, in Africa, they uh, had um, some, some scientists that had discovered they went there and to their utmost um, astonishment, they found that they had outlined the entire galaxy with planets and stars that had never even heard about. So they asked, they said, how in the world can this tribe in the darkest part of Africa have knowledge about the galaxy? And they said, well, the story goes like our forefathers saw this bright light in the sky and it landed and out of this, um, this vehicle came um, half humans and half dolphins. And they uh, dig this hole in the ground, fill it up with water, and stay there during the night. Then in the daytime, they came out and gave teachings. Wow. And then later on, just a month later, after I was introduced to that, I was in Sedona, and there was a man who um, said, Eros, I want you to have this. I channel this for you. And these were these half dolphins and half humans that caused Choloshians from the Vega star system is a planet called Chulos. That same day, another person said, Eros, I want you to read this book. And that was from a person from NASA, a retired, who used to have top clearance. Mm-hmm. And he had written a book about the Chulosians visiting planet Earth. This was somebody who worked for NASA who yeah. had top security yeah. clearance. So, wow. But basically, the Chulosians felt there was no intelligent life here, so they left. <laughs> well, they haven't met us. I, I tell them to come back. I, we want to talk to them. Right, but you know, three times you listen, right? God is telling you when you hear three times from three different sources, right? Mm-hmm. So obviously, there was a very, very powerful message there, you know. Okay, so uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to get more of the messages that you. Dorothy Lee Donahue is an awakener, an activator, and an accelerator. She works with people from all walks of life, from corporate executives to celebrities to housewives and children, assisting them in finding their purpose, their joy, and their mission, guiding them to align with who they are and who they came to be. Awaken your life, activate the secrets that are within you, and accelerate your path with life coach, spiritual healer, and founder of Energetic Alchemy, Dorothy Lee Donahue. To learn more about her book, or by appointment, or to attend one of her upcoming Energetic Alchemy courses, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with our host, Filippo Voltaggio, and tonight's special guest, Elder Shaman Aros Christos. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows, which include luminaries such as David Wilcock, Muriel Hemingway, Marcy Shimoff, and Barnett Bain on our archive page at our website, lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O.com. And now back to our show. Well, Eros, uh, <laughs> messages are powerful. And, yeah. And you also have something sound-wise. So oh we'll talk goodness. about that in a second. I, okay. I know you love to... So <laughs> the, 
the messages. It, are there other messages other than the one about love? From the, <clears throat> from the dolphins? Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, the dolphins' main message is that humanity take responsibility for who they are. They cannot hide anymore and saying, I'm just a human being and I'm limited and I'm separated and I can't do this and I can't do that. So we have to take responsibility for that. We are divine multidimensional beings and we're co-creating together with the dolphins and everybody else as well, right? Mm. So we can't live in this place of victimhood anymore. We really have to take responsibility and understand who we really are. That's one of the, 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 the most powerful message of the dolphins, to encourage people to, to awaken. It's not appropriate anymore to stay asleep any longer. And by asleep you mean? Well, just, uh, just identify yourself being, being a, a human body or the mind or your limitations. Understand that you are, you are again a divine being. You're so so beyond the physical, your true nature, and invite that to be part of your moment-to-moment existence. Not just something you remember when things are difficult or you have a fear or something like that. Understand that is your friend, and that is what is really makes anything happen. Without that being inside of you, you wouldn't even be able to, to think or have the, um, have the five senses or have any kind of experience. So this is like the higher self, in other words, or the soul or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever however name you want to call it. And it's a very joyous and, 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 and part of your nature. It's not, it's not a drag down, serious, dark, uh, fearful. It's joyous. Beautiful, a dancing part of you. Like the dolphins. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so the dolphins not only dance, but they, they sing, they, they, they have frequencies. Now, you won a, an alternative Grammy in 2007 uh-huh. for uh, the CD that you did. We haven't talked about it, actually. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about your CD. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this was for the most transformational artist of the year. And being that I worked with the dolphins for so long, at one day when I did some healing work, I started doing these these sounds, and I I had no idea where they came from, and and then just started getting more and more and more. And then in two thousand and one, in the summertime, I was in Columbus, Ohio, and I was working in the healing center there, and I was working a lot. But people were standing outside the door while I was doing some healing on a person uh, on the inside. And from one moment to the other, my voice just went, and I couldn't even say anything. And I understood I had overdone it, right? Because the frequency that comes through my vocal cords are very powerful. So <clears throat> I have to, you have to kind of balance it. But anyway, I wanted to ask, so I asked the dolphins, what's going on? I said, we had to shut you down to do an energetic surgery on your vocal cords. Wow. A week later, the voice came back much more powerful and much more transformative. And through the years, I've had miracles happen to people who I've done healings on with this voice. So just to give you a very, a very quick example, which is one of my favorites, is uh, a woman who had been in a wheelchair for 30 years. Hmm. After one session, she said her hair and her nails started growing again. After another session, she started feeling energy in her body again for the first time in all of these years. And another session, she stood up on a walker. Hmm. So we are talking about transformation that are really amazing. Because everything is sound and light, right? From the sound, just from the sound. Right, and that's how the dolphins do it. You know, with their sonar and their intent, they create a metamorphosis so the body starts aligning itself to its own healing powers. Actually, yes, I have heard that dolphins in the water, when somebody's giving birth, that that they somehow help through this sonar. Yeah. All all right, so you just from listening to the CD, you can also have... Effects? Oh, absolutely. We, on the website, there's uh, some samples of the sounds. Okay. I've had people in Sweden who was listening to it, and I said, oh, I felt this peace and this quiet, and I felt this, this 
really um, beautiful state. Now, because it's been coming through me for so many years, people are sharing with me, oh, I saw this, I went through the cosmos, or the walls disappeared, or I saw blue light, or whatever, all of this, right? And, and I get to experience the frequency, but I don't have this, these visions, right, mm-hmm. while I'm doing it. So I was been wondering, I must be, what does it feel like to be in, on the other end? And the other day, just for, recently, yeah, for whatever reason, I closed my eyes and listened from a place of not that it was coming through me, mm-hmm. just listened to the sounds. And for the first time, Filippo, in all of these years, I really... <laughs> you got to experience yourself. <laughs> or, I was or what absolutely comes through you. nice. Wow, now I get what people are talking about. Now, I know that after the show, the audience that's gathered here is going to get to have an experience with that. But I wonder if you could just give a few seconds or half a minute or so for the radio audience to listen. Okay. You know, what I do normally, I I do my little galactic spiel and and it's just to kind of um, tune my vocal cords a little bit. And then I do three ohms and then I do a little bit. Okay. But it's going to be a very short one. Okay. Okay. So just uh, close your eyes and... and, and, um, Allow the frequency to become part of your breath now, okay? Hakiala la kilemana yala mana wahaya, kilemana haya, kilemana yahala mana yaha, la kilemana yahala mana waya, la kilemana kilemana yaha, yal kilemana yaha, a kilemana yahala mana kiyaha yala, a kantraha, a kantraha, a kantraha, makiyala mana kilemana yaha. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Where does that come from? Good question. <laughs> I know that people who are professional singers, you know, they wonder, how, how, how do you go f- from up, d- up here down to here in the middle? And I mean, mm. you, because, you know, you're singing, it's, it's very tiresome, right? And then if I do this for like 40, 40 minutes <clears throat> in a session, and it goes like, like in, in, and then in the middle and every way, it's, yeah, I don't and know. You weren't able to do this before the quote-unquote surgery? That the uh, to a certain degree, but not to that to that uh, power that it's uh, developed through the years. No. Now, do you, do you know what you're saying or what you're conveying or some of it? I can traha basically means understanding begets the journey. Okay. 
it's a and you know people have said oh i recognize that language it's familiar to me it's nothing uh, oh it's my my mother tongue basically right because again when we embrace the larger part of who we are we also have a galactic family that 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 uh, that are now visiting us more and more right and and um and they don't speak in a human language. They speak more in tonal, tonal, what do you call it, tonational? Tonality. Tonalities, right, mm-hmm. tonality in frequencies and vibrations like the dolphins mm-hmm. because there's no miscommunication at that point. When we just vibrate from our hearts, there's an instant recognition. When we speak words, some of us or most of us have a tendency of not speaking the full truth, right? Because the words are conveying a lot of limitations that we have allowed ourselves to believe to be real. You know, the range was really interesting. It ranged from the sounds from like opera singer to sounds a child would make to uh, Miss Piggy or Mickey Mouse or something. Um <laughs> But it reminded me of what children do when they play. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if there's a communication that's happening there or if they're expressing something or if they're just playing. Just. There's that word again. (laughs) If they're just playing or if there's something in their playing that we don't know. Um, You know, I'm I'm sure there is because as human beings, you know, we have exchanged being a grown-up to be serious and limited. Mm -hmm. As a child... That childlike state is a very high state of consciousness. And Einstein said, you know, imagination is more powerful than knowledge because children imagine and it's a natural state of consciousness to imagine. So and then the way they uh, interact with each other through the voice, it's a natural phenomena, you know, Mm -hmm. speaking words the way you and I speak is not natural to us because most of our true nature is getting lost in the the understanding of the words. So it's a so. For example, if you don't speak a language, let's say I don't speak French, and I hear it, it sounds very beautiful and very exciting. And it's like I can tune into the frequency of the language, and I can feel what the person is saying, mm. even though I don't know exactly what he or she is saying, right? If we allow ourselves to be able to do that. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Right. So, um, um, you know, that's interesting. I remember working uh, for IBM, and we had a, a speaker come to speak to, we, uh, to us, and we had, I don't know, maybe 500 people in the room, all of us IBMers, we called ourselves, and I was sitting next to uh, my manager, um, and the speaker said something that I really liked, and I, I said, "Woohoo!" <laughs> and she said, "Stop that!" And I said, "Why?" I, she says, "Just stop it." And I thought, "Okay, I better stop it because you know she's the manager." And ten minutes later, I don't know, fifteen minutes later, the speaker says, "I want to hear everybody say woohoo!" <laughs> and I looked at her. And don't you know it? She woohooed. And I said, why is it okay now? And she said, stop it. Just stop it. So sometimes we need permission. Right. But that's because, so, so we, have, we, have, we have been taught not to be spontaneous, you know, and the dolphins are the most spontaneous creature that I know of, Right. And in spontaneity, like a child, that's where the wisdom is hidden. It's not hidden in the way we have perceived it as grown-ups and studying and doing this and, and that. It's in that freedom of being. Spontaneous. Spontaneous. Well, we're going to do something spontaneous, but after we do something scheduled right now, we've got a commercial. <laughs> Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Productions, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes, thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes, live coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like to to appear on our radio show or TV shows, visit 
Life Changes with Filippo.com, and click on our representation page. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with our host, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows, which include luminaries such as Barnett Bain, Mariel Hemingway, April Crawford, Channeling Veronica, and David Wilcock at our archive on our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O dot com. Eros. Yes. I'm wondering, though we aren't connected, some of us, or maybe we are, or maybe actually that maybe that's just it. We are connected, but we don't know, Mm -hmm. um, uh, to what you're channeling, but we... We might not know what we're doing, but you do. And I wonder if we could do something a little spontaneous, a little different for just 30 seconds. If you could lead us in doing whatever sounds we want, which won't be what you do, but I have a feeling we'll shake up something within us to allow us to get closer to where you are. <clears throat> okay, so um, just open up your, open up your legs. Sorry, it sounds maybe... Wait a minute. I mean, we're on radio, so they don't understand. What are we doing here exactly? I'm an athlete. I can't do it. <laughs> it's just to let... Not the, let It's to let the energy in. So open up your, 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 your body to receive the Okay, so don't be yourself. closed in. in right, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, well, He's European. I'm from Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> so... So inside of you, you have um, a tone that vibrates with your consciousness where you're at right now. And when you start recognizing that, it's like an old tune that you remember. And when you then start using that tone spontaneously and trust it and don't be timid you will see things start shifting in your life Mm. because the spoken words right now won't do it anymore because the vibrations and the frequencies are shifting so quickly now that the the words can simply not explain what's happening in so many instances at this point Mm. so close your eyes and just let any sound come out and don't care what it is. Don't, don't uh, edit it with other words. Trust. Don't judge it. Trust. So just start. Go for it. Uh... Be bolder. Come on. state they can't even applaud look at them they're just <laughs> that is that is great the first thing i noticed was the smiles and and the just they were in a place mm-hmm. so and you you might have observed yourself to feel if you felt timid or you felt you want to hold back because you didn't feel safe or you didn't want to be in this way. Uh, you know, you mask to unmask. For example, if I put on a clown nose, 
it allows me to do things that I normally wouldn't do, right? Mm, you mask to unmask. Wow. Right. I used to do a workshop called the Sacred Clown Workshop based on the Hopi Indians. And the, and the participants, was only men in this one, had to do two things. They couldn't talk and they had to wear a clown nose. Mm. After a while, <laughs> they started buying their own outfits. The hair, the hats, the co- I mean, the whole everything, right? And then we invited their, their girlfriends or wives to come and witness them when they had to kind of do a mime. And they were saying, who is this person? Mm. I have no idea who oh, that person is. Because they didn't recognize them because they had a clown No, nose? but they, be, they couldn't speak. They, their personality shifted because they had to be so authentic when they couldn't speak. And it was, an amazing transformation took place. So maybe, maybe we should do a workshop like that, actually. I don't yeah. have my nose with me, but... Um... <laughs> Uh, absolutely. I, I think it's a great idea. Actually, just, just, I, I'm still taken by what yeah, you how beautiful it was. Right? Yeah, that, that really was. Are we able to clap now, or do we, we're out of place where we can clap? <laughs> well, we didn't get to talk about your books. You have Time is Promised oh. to No One, which is a powerful book <laughs> of, of, about a man who has three months to live. You have a book coming out called The Conductor of Time, which we can learn more about at your website. Uh, and that website is eroschristos.com, which is A-R-O-S-C-R-Y-S-T-O-S.com. And if you didn't catch that, of course, you can listen to the show again or go to lifechangeswithgilippo.com in order to get it there. So with that, I know that uh, in a few minutes we're going to get to experience more of you for those of us who are here live. Uh, in the meantime, this is all the time we have on radio, but thank you so much, Eros, for being with us today. Just give me one, 30 seconds, okay? So I want to share with all of you who are listening to, to this show with Filippo, which I'm very grateful being invited to, to uh, play with Filippo in this way. Understand who you really are. You are not limited. Right this very moment, you are whole and complete. There is no need to add or take anything away from you. You truly are. Everything you've been looking for is who you are. Trust that. Know that. Live that. Be that. And you'll see miracles taking place in your life. Thank you so much. This is the best part of the show. <laughs> well, actually, I, I was about to say what you just said in those last 30 seconds could have summed up uh, the whole message. And actually, what could be more simple, huh, Mark? That was fabulous. And I hope that, that uh, everyone is able, and, and, and I hope that most of our audience, if not all, were able to listen to that without that moment of judgment at the beginning when you hear kind of what he does and who he is. And I'll tell you why. I, I had two dolphin stories that I think are worthy of sharing. Uh, one uh, was the kind of a typical, uh, I think, college age moment, but really opened my eyes to other things going on in the world, in this universe, for there being more, right? And uh, we were at SeaWorld. And it was myself and a girl I was dating and one of my buddies from the football team, the girl he was dating. And we went to the dolphin pond where they swim around and around and around. Not the, the, not the, uh, the most fun thing to watch, but enjoying the dolphins and being in their presence. And uh, every time this one dolphin came around, I called it the ugly dolphin. Right? I didn't call it the ugly dolphin, but that's what I refer to it because my knuckleheaded football buddy used to comment on it going around and make a comment. He'd look at that one. He'd make a comment. He'd make a comment. And I'm watching this dolphin come around and look at him. On the way by, he would look. Or, or she. I'm not quite. I haven't, haven't figured that out on my own yet. But would, would look and would hear. And we were all shoulder to shoulder. And there wasn't, you couldn't slide a piece of paper between the four of us. And a couple of these comments. It didn't mean any hard, but he didn't harm, but he was trying to be funny. And probably the fifth or sixth cycle through, the dolphin came around and looked up. And then went, and he was so 
and not a drop to the left and not a drop to the right. And, and all of us went like, and everybody, everybody stopped. And I said, hmm, that was the, the, the very, very much an eye-opening moment, uh, that there's more and that they understand and that the possibility of speaking, of course, I'm a fan of, of frequency and I know how Tesla used to communicate with pigeons and, and, you know, it's all a matter of frequency and sound. But the one other, and uh, thanks for giving me the time to do this, is uh, uh, a dear friend had come up with a brain tumor. And uh, this was probably 10 or 11 years ago. And uh, this is uh, one of the last nights that I was spending with him. It actually happened the next morning. Uh, as it was re- told back to me by the other friends that we were all staying with, he walked out to the dock on the water in St. Petersburg, Florida, where he was asking for a sign that everything was going to be okay. And that moment, two dolphins came in around the corner, swam right up to the dock, and rolled around and swam off. Mm. Mm. So uh, there's a lot more going on than, well, than uh, we know. So I appreciate what you're doing and that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Did the friend pass? He did pass eventually, uh, but we had wonderful times between then and, and I, he, I tell you what, he transitioned in a much more peaceful state. Well, sure. I mean, uh, be okay could mean a lot of things, and that you know it might have given him the courage to transition and and be able to enjoy his last uh, days. Wow, that's so. They have a sense of humor. They splashed your one friend, and they came and they showed love to your other friend, and that's that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Very much yeah. interacting on our level in a way, right? It was it was neat. Yeah, you know, actually, and I'm uh, I, I was very impressed by Eros, and I and I told him I said our show is. Is, is, is more for a mass audience because those of us who believe, um, that's great, but if we can get others who don't understand or who don't yet believe or if we can get them to understand or to see things a certain way, um, and, and he, was, he was all for it. He's, he's, no fear. He's like, absolutely. I said, you know, some people think it's crazy. He says, fine. I said, some people think it's weird. He says, fine. He says, let's, let's talk about it. And, and let's put it out there. Crazy, weird, whatever it is, it's fine. And don't short yourself in the way that you bring the information out, the way that's, uh, that's mm-hmm. acceptable to, to people that may not be familiar with it. So yeah, it and good, exactly. It was a great interview. And, and so, like, when he was leading us in, that, in the energy work, um, uh, or whatever that was, um, I liked how he encouraged us to do more and don't be afraid. And, and at that moment, we did more. And had we had more time, I'm sure he would have said, and more and more and more, where the, the, probably the walls would have caved in with the, all the energy in this room. Uh, we are that powerful, and I'm grateful for him to to remind us of that. Indeed. So, with that, we're at the ne- uh, the end of another Life Changes with Filippo episode. Uh, oh, my I am Filippo Voltaggio. I had to read it here. <laughs> I needed the paper for that. And it has been my pleasure hosting Life Changes with Filippo today. I, along with our segment hosts and producers, Dorothy Lee Donahue and Mark Lejour and Mark Skelton, and our engineer, Seth Hendricks, thank you for joining us and being part of the show and being part of the change we all wish to see in the world. You have been listening to Life Changes with Filippo with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Listen live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the BBS Radio Network and visit us online at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Remember, you can also keep the conversation going during the week by visiting us and writing us on our website, via Twitter and YouTube, and very soon, our upcoming Life Changes social media network. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ion Ways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles with Dorothy Donahue. To learn more about them, you will find their links on the sponsor page of our website. Once again, join us here next week as we consciously explore and embrace the only constant, life changes.